Welcome back, everyone, to Inside Politics. Our guest is the Republican Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton. This week, the legislature convened a lot going on. Uh, we've kind of discussed a few issues in the first two segments. I want to talk about COVID legislation. Mm -hmm. There was a special session about that, obviously got a lot of attention. What what do you expect in this next session as far as COVID legislation? Well, I don't know there'll be much. There might be some tweaks to what we passed. Um, I know we're waiting for some of the court cases to settle out and see what those look like, whether it's the federal level or the, the us being sued in state court. So we'll, we'll see what that looks like. I think one of the big things, we talked about education, but another big thing about COVID, is in, in the younger ages, there's a lot of anxiety and depression in those ages. And so one of the things that we really need to start talking about too is mental health and about giving people mental health. And I think also what COVID has taught us is it attacks people who maybe have or are obese or immune compromised. So there should be a conversation long term about how to become a healthier state. Because we know if we're a healthier state, COVID would affect us less. Um. <coughs> Yes. What about juvenile justice reform? That's an issue uh, that is probably going to be discussed in this session, right? right? And, and what does that mean? What will that take on? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so we, we traveled the state to talk about with district attorneys and law enforcement officials. We don't have a program set up to try to get juveniles out of the life of crime. A lot of times the career criminals are juveniles. So we want to try to create a program that would help them get out of that crime spree, out of that pathway, and get them back into a path in school and opportunity and trying to get a job. We've never really done that, and so that's where we're trying to move to. <coughs> on, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, that's okay. I hope you're right. Uh, uh, on this show, uh, often I hear from people who say <coughs> they they are uncomfortable that the legislature interferes with what is passed in Davidson County. Okay. In other words. How do you feel about federal mandates? When, when the federal government passes something and puts a mandate on the state of Tennessee, how, how, how do you feel about that? Well, they do it all the time, even without the government. You know, I think you have to be cautious when you do that. Um, I think we've pushed back against mandates, to be the honest truth. But I also think you have to know uh, the history of the states. The states set up the federal government, and that's why we have the Tenth Amendment and state rights. Our job is to be the ones in charge. And the states also set up the local governments, and the state government is the overseer. And so what some people see as mandates, we see as our oversight authority based on the Constitution of how our system of government was set up. So you see it differently? I do a little bit. We don't intervene a lot. Um, but when we do, like the, the police board that they try to put in place to limit law enforcement and do some other things, then we intervene. And it's also threatened from time to time. Do you see, are there issues, <coughs> do you feel like coming up in this next year where you may be intervening in something passed here in Davidson County? Well, you never know what Davidson County may or may not do. You know, I know that their schools are poor, poor performing schools. And so we're trying to figure out how to work with them to get their schools back up. Sometimes they don't want to work with the state, right? I mean, there has to be a willingness to work with the state. Uh, they don't want to, which is fine. But our job is to make sure that every kid in the state of Tennessee, K through 12, has a solid education that they can read, that they can write, and they can be successful so they can go get a job. And if those school systems aren't doing the job and they're not doing it, then sometimes there's things that have to be done. You're one of the highest ranking Republicans in the state of Tennessee, Speaker of the House. Do you agree? So I think it's OK to ask you this question. Okay. Do you agree with former President Donald Trump that the last presidential election was stolen? Well, I don't know if it was stolen. I think there was a lot of ir irregulatory types of things, irregularities. Um, uh, I think there was problems with the absentee ballots. I really do. Um, I don't know if there was enough votes in, in any states to turn the election, but I do think there was fraud. And so one of the things that we passed last year was on absentee ballots. In our state now, they have to have a unique watermark. Because what you saw happen in other states is anybody can print them off their computer, they're not unique, and they can turn them in, and it causes a problem. So we looked at what happened in other states, and so we tried to protect our elections here. Does it concern you that if the former president walks around saying that it's been stolen and it wasn't legitimate, that it hurts democracy? Well, once again, you have freedom of speech, right? So your democracy is your First Amendment right. Now, are you trying to say that he can't say what he feels like happened? It's his opinion. doesn't mean you have to agree with it. I'm sure President Biden has said things that people don't agree with um, and, and others have. And so realistically, that's his opinion. 
you can agree or disagree with it. I don't think it affects anything. I think you, it allows you to examine the system to see if it is, if it isn't. We know that in Tennessee in the past, there's a lot of election fraud. And that's why we put in photo ID. That's why we try not to do same day uh, registration, same day vote, because that's filled with fraud. That's why we don't do drop boxes for absentee ballots, because there's fraud there. So all you can really do is try to have a system that limits the fraud. I don't know if you can ever get away with get all the fraud out, but limits the fraud so that when you vote, you know that your vote counts the same as someone else's vote. And um, as far as redistricting, if there were a, a legal challenge, do you expect that there will be a legal challenge? Uh, they say they do, but the, you know, the state Democrat Party doesn't have enough money probably to pay a, an attorney, so um, they might do it pro bono, maybe. But I would assume they're going to try to sue, which is their, if they want to. Um, you know, we're not going to stop them, but we feel pretty confident that what we did was constitutional based on the Voting Rights Act. There was no race taken into account. And as a matter of fact, in Davidson County, in the old 5th Congressional District, the one that's right now, 32% minority participation in the old 5th Congressional District because they included Cheatham and Dixon. In the new 5th District that we drew, it's 27%. So they're arguing over 32 to 27% is what they're arguing over. How much federal pressure did you feel when it came time to put this map together to help Republicans regain control of Congress? There was none. No, no, nobody ever reached out to us and said, we want you to draw an eighth district. That never happened. But also, as you're looking at, as we're being criticized for this, people need to look at California. They, they took away nine Republican seats. New York took away six Republican seats. Maryland took away the sole Republican seat. So as you're sitting here critiquing us on what we're trying to do, the Democrat Party needs to turn around to their states that are blue and criticize them for doing what they're accusing us of doing, which we didn't do. When you say that, I mean, does that mean you drew this map out of what's best for Tennesseans or because it's what happened, uh, what happened in California? No, I'm saying that we drew it based on what's Tennesseans, but what you have is you have a Democrat Party being hypocrites. Because what they're saying is we gerrymandered and we did this and we broke this up, but yet they're not criticizing their own colleagues who actually did that. And, and that they did make Republicans not have congressional seats. They did draw Republican congressmen in with each other. So they're sitting here trying to blame us for something that we didn't do, but yet they turn a blind eye to their own party when they're doing it to Republicans in other states. We have to leave it there. Okay. Speaker Sexton, thank you thank for coming you. on. And thank all of you for watching Inside Politics.